All right, so as we look at absolute value functions here, this question says write the piecewise function that represents each graph, okay? So remember, piecewise means that there are pieces, separate pieces that we have to, that we have to draw or we have to write. So uh, let me just go back to, okay, remember this part? Remember we talked about this part in the lesson? And we, I, I tried to explain this, that at a certain point, you know, the, the absolute value function is going to look like two separate pieces or two versions of a function here. So there's a, there's a, pr a version of a function, there's a, another version of the function. So how does, that, how does that relate to this question? Well, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna notice that this absolute value function is actually a combination of two functions. One function looks like this, a line that goes like this, and the other function is a line that goes like this. All right? So this, this absolute value function is borrowing part of this red function, that's this part that it's borrowing or, or kind of imitating, and it's also imitating this part of the other function. Okay? So there's pieces of two different functions. All right, so write the piecewise function. Okay, so y is going to look like, and you can kind of draw these big brackets. I think that's how they, that's how they show that, right? The big, a big brace. It's kind of like a funny bracket, a big brace. And what we see is that, I'm gonna erase this black again. What we see is that the absolute value function behaves like the positive value of this inside function. So it, it behaves partly like this, 2x minus 2, okay? And partly like this, the negative version of 2x minus 2. You see that? And that's the blue graph. So again, the blue graph is y equals negative 2x minus 2, or y equals negative 2x plus 2 when you uh, distribute that. And the red graph is actually y equals positive 2x minus 2. See that? So the piecewise function says this, this absolute value function is comprised of or made up of pieces of two other functions that we know of. Here's the one and here's the other. Or I should circle this one, it's the one I've used. Now the last part, the final part is stating on which part of the domain does the absolute value function behave like this. So where, x equals what? Or x, what values for x? So you would put comma, and you could write if x is what? Well, what we have to find is we have to find this intercept here because this is the cutoff point, okay? So if you notice, from this cutoff point to the right, the graph behaves like this. So for this one here, the absolute value function behaves like this 2x minus 2 at x values greater than one, okay? Now, you have to just, one of them has to be equal to and the other one not. So greater than, I'm gonna do greater than or equal to one, okay? And over here, the absolute value graph behaves like the negative version if x is less than one. You see, the one is the cutoff point. So bottom line is for these questions, you have to you have to figure out okay what is the line or the curve that this is behaving like and where is it behaving like that positive negative versions whatever so for straight lines it's easy find the x-intercept and x greater than x less than and what I what I mentioned there about the equal sign just one of these has to have the equal and the other one not okay so the cutoff is at one so one of them has the equal and one of them has the not equal and then you should be good okay and of course, if you distributed this negative sign and wrote it like this down here, that's totally fine as well. But that's how you do that, okay? So why don't, why don't you guys, uh, I mean, I don't know which one you had to do, but uh, why don't you do B? I'll clip B out and I'll put it in there. Why don't you guys do B right now just to check to see if you understand this, okay? So there's, there's A, I'll plop B down here. So, so take a moment, take a moment and do the same thing for B, okay? right there 
Okay, so if you had a chance to, to give this one a try, so obviously we've got the equation given here, that's great. So y is gonna behave like 3x plus six for part of, of this graph, and it's gonna behave like the negative version of this where it's flipped for another part. The cutoff is x equals negative two here. So when x is greater than negative two, it behaves like the positive version. How do I know that? Because the slope is positive, right? The slope is positive, so slope positive. This is the slope negative version, that's this one, negative version. So x greater than or equal to negative two goes up here, less than two goes here. Okay, that's what, that's what it looks like for number nine. Any questions?